With the top down, it offers a beautiful view. With the pedal down, it offers tire smoking madness. The term Belvedere actually means nice view. It's an Italian word, bell for beautiful, vedere for view. And on the 66 Plymouth Belvedere in the Brothers collection, the view actually gets better when you open the hood to reveal the 426 Hemi. It's not hard to enjoy a sunny day with a 1966 Plymouth Belvedere II 426 Hemi convertible like this one from the Brothers collection. And not many had the opportunity to do so as less than 10 of these were built. But we're happy to share this light blue with you. The mid 1960s saw a dramatic shift in American car styling as the curvy finned 1950s were in the rearview mirror and the more boxy and conservative design was on the horizon. This was the era of the narrow necktie, glass box architecture, and muted colors like avocado and beige. At the same time, automakers realized they needed exciting products to tickle the fancies of younger buyers. Looking back at advertising, it wasn't until about 1965 that automakers made an obvious push towards the youth market, with a few exceptions here and there. Ads in the late 50s targeted middle-income families and affluent households with station wagons and full-size family cars, and high-end cars driven by successful businessmen. But by 1966, Plymouth advertising was focused on performance, speed, racing, power, all to motivate the kids to go buy a hot-rodded Belvedere like our feature car and then go out and have a fun time. This big sled might not seem to be a sporty, high-performance ride at first glance, but don't let that glance be the whole picture. Under the hood of our 66 resides one of the highest performing V8s ever offered in a factory stock car, the 426 Hemi. Chrysler engineers went to great lengths to make sure that these engines would stay together uh, given the abuse that they knew the drivers would put to them. Uh, we found a cool story where after they were assembled, they suspended these engines from a cable system and ran them and measured at the front of the rear of the engine for any uh, vibrations and, and shake that the thing might have. And even back in 66, they had the technology to detect an imbalance as small as the weight of a paper clip at the outside of the flywheel on a Hemi engine, and they knew where to counterbalance it to smooth it out so that these things would stay together for a long time. The 426 Hemi had been around for a few years, but it was built as a racer and not a cruiser. 1966 was the first year for the Street Hemi, a slightly more mild version of the race engine that still delivered 425 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. It still boasted dual quad carburetors feeding the legendary hemispherical chambered heads, squeezing air and fuel with a 10 and a quarter to one compression ratio. And although big, these cars were fast, like low 13 second times at over 105 miles an hour in the quarter mile fast. And they were big enough to carry your speed freak friends with you. And these were well built cars, uh, but they were also negatively affected by the effects of time and rust. And many have disappeared from the planet. But this one still demonstrates some of the quality that made them attractive to buyers back in 66. We're so used to plastic interiors today that the feel of steel is refreshing on this car. You probably won't see this on another car show ever, but this door lock button mechanism is so satisfying. It just has the right amount of click and resistance. I could do this till I wear this thing out. The interior is big and spacious with attractive two-tone blue upholstery on the giant bench seat and door panels. This car is an automatic on the column and the instrumentation is limited to fuel, temperature, a 120 mile per hour speedometer, a charging meter, and oil pressure, but they don't have any numbers on the gauges. I guess you just keep the needles pointing up and hang on. The top goes down for fair weather cruising and there's a heater and an AM radio on board, but not much else for creature comforts. These cars bucked the big boat handling myth perpetuated by other cars of the day 
as the suspension utilizes a torsion bar design with sway bars that provided relatively tight cornering and good road performance for the day, if you could keep from sliding off the slippery bench seat in the turns. This one rolls on original style wheels that have been repainted with matching body color accents, but those would have been black when new. Dual exhaust and a limited slip differential hang out under the flat bottomed unibody. These are good looking cars with aero straight lines and minimal trim to disturb them. They're uncommon today, especially the 426 Hemi automatic convertibles as there were only six built. How cool is that? This car is big enough to where you can bring all your friends along for the ride, and we bet they'd have a fun time trying to hang on. Thanks for watching this episode of Muscle Car of the Week. We'll be back next time with another cool car from the Brothers Collection. And in the meantime, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check the Facebook page, and our website at musclecartheweek.com. See you later.